Hey guys, welcome back to Factorio Space Exploration. It's another episode, and today, in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to build the mega base. It's going to be placed on this giant continent right here. But before we do that, we've got a few things to take care of. There are some aliens encroaching on our continent, and we are going to be needing some resources, all the vanilla resources in the game, iron, copper, stone, all those kinds of things. We are going to acquire via train. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our bottleneck and we're going to move it all the way up here, which means we need to evict the aliens who are illegally occupying via the terms of the treaty, the island. Oh, looks like we're about to get another coronal mass ejection. Heh, <laughs> that's cute. Barely a hiccup. So this new fresh chunk of continent is totally clear of the aliens, and it's time to set up our second bottleneck. Previously, we'd been using the spiked steel wall, but I noticed that the spitters had been spitting at the wall, attacking it instead of trying to attack the turrets. So I've downgraded that to the concrete wall. I'm not sure why they were attacking the wall. Either the wall is attacking them back, and so they interpret it as an enemy, and they're trying to kill it because it's got spikes, or this maze is too compact for the largest of the aliens to maneuver through, and so they're trying to break their way through it. Anyway, the bottleneck is set up, the oil has been delivered, let's get the artillery going and we can see if this new design is any better or any worse. Here we go. So the spinners are still attacking the wall. I even made the maze a little bit shorter just so that the turrets would be able to hit them sooner and they are still out of range. So it seems like there's a problem with the maze itself and not the fact that it was using the spiked walls rather than the concrete walls. It still works, we're just taking some collateral damage, so it's not really a big deal that I need to address right away. So with that out of the way, it's time to finally build the mega base. So here, without further ado, are the three simple steps that you can follow if you want to build a mega base in Factorio Space Exploration. Step one. Step one is pretty straightforward. Merely have your starting base stockpile a crap load of building supplies to build the mega base with. Ah, but then I guess you need a starter base, don't you? Step point five, I guess. Okay then, step point five. Build a starter base, which we've done, check mark. Yeah, but then we had to build the starter base, didn't we? Okay, let's back up. Step point two or something. So, step point two, first thing to do is to build a burner base. Step point three. After the burner base, we made the base builder, which actually just built the starter base, not to be confused with the mega base. Still working on that. Uh, wait a second, back up again. Step point one. Crash land on an alien planet. Ah, but then before that. Step point oh five. Download the space exploration mod and all recommended and required mods and install it into your mod folder. Step point oh oh two. Okay, actual first thing, purchase Factorio and install it on your computer. Step two. Now, where were we? Okay, step two. Find a huge piece of land and clear it of debris. Did I say this would be three steps? Step two and a half. Step two and a half because I slightly miscalculated the number of steps in this easy to follow tutorial. Pepper the landscape with supply depots. Step 2.75. Step 2.75 is take all the stuff that the starter base has been stockpiling it and deposit it in these storehouses we've peppered all over the place. Step 2.9. Okay, penultimate step. Casually just build 30,000 construction robots. Step three. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for. Step three, and also the easiest step of all. Get the robots to build the base for you. And 
And that's it. The Mega Base is done. It's really that easy. Three simple steps to build a Mega Base in Factorio Space Exploration. I don't see what all the fuss is about this mod pack being so complicated and frustrating. It seems pretty straightforward to me, but now that we've got the base all built, we have got some cleanup to do and some adapting. I designed this thing more or less in a vacuum without knowing where I was going to put it. And so I didn't take things like shorelines or the shape of the continent we're going to put it on into account. The rail line I put, which was really just to have the thing be functional and have all the trains be connected together, it does not fit. We're going to have to fix that. And we also have a few things we can get rid of. There is just the stub of a train right here. And its sole purpose was to deliver water to the Holmium plates, which are getting delivered via landing pad right there. We don't need that train delivering water because we're on the coast. We can just use an offshore pump. There's another water train right over here that is doing the same thing. So I guess the first thing we'll do, let's get rid of these water trains. The water trains are gone. I also removed the junction up here so the rail just curves because we don't have an extra branch delivering to extra trains. And instead of the trains, we just have a few lines with occasional pumps over to the coast. And then over here, a very short distance to the coast. Now that we've taken care of that, let's fix this side of the rail line. It hits the coastline and disappears because you can't build rail on water. So instead, I think what we'll do is we will just build at a 45 degree angle here. And then we can run up the coast and skip all of this inlet, outlet jaggediness. And that looks quite a bit cleaner. I still have one extra line left to connect up, but it's mostly fixed. Next thing I want to take care of is we need to get rid of all these roboports and the storage storehouses we use to put all the stuff to build the base or for the robots to build the base. We need to get rid of that now. The only place I want robots messing around is up here where they're going to be building practical things. They don't need to be flying all over here. This is the belt based part of the build. As you can tell from all the yellow, that's all belts. And we don't need roboports covering all of that, so let's get rid of them. And that already looks much nicer, quite a bit cleaner. This is the current roboport area, and we'll probably eventually get rid of this area too. This was the staging area where we delivered all the materials. For my next trick, we're going to need a lot of water in space, and the best way to get it into space is to turn it into ice with the help of some cryonite slush. And so we've got this big 416 train delivering water and then a train stacker back here with extra water trains. And that is probably unnecessary considering we are right by the coast. We are on the coast. It is an island. We are on the island. And so I think what we'll do is we will just get rid of the train and we'll just run some pumps down here to the coast. No big deal. Easy peasy. <laughs> And now that I've removed that, I'm thinking we can probably do the same thing with this water train here for all of this oil processing. We need a lot of oil byproducts in space getting sent into space via these cargo rocket silos. But we are also on the coast, same distance as this other one, well, maybe slightly farther away. But we might as well get rid of this train too, which means we can get rid of these extra trains and this train stacker. <laughs> So we got rid of all the big clunky water trains that were taking up space here and instead we have this lovely array of water pipes going down to the coast or rather delivering water from the coast up to here to get turned into ice and to help process the oil. We still have this big oil train and I would like to disconnect it from this network of the smaller trains, the 1-4s, because it's going to conflict with the, the size of the blocks. These are set up to allow one of those smaller trains within them, but if the bigger train gets onto this network, it's going to clutter things up and might cause a jam. Or if I make the blocks bigger to account for it, it's going to limit traffic through here. So I think what we're going to do, since we only have this oil train left, the big ones, and the rest of the trains are these smaller ones, we're going to separate it from the network and give it its own system. We've got oil here, and we got some oil here, and then there's quite a bit of oil down here. There's one, two, three, four, five clusters, six clusters, all sort of right here. So what we might do is move this rail line over and just give it uh, maybe a line on the right side of the coast and keep the smaller trains on the left side of the coast. 
So now we have two independent rail networks. The small trains can use the left side of the coast. They can go up to the north right through there, or they go all the way down the left side of the coast along this new line of rail I just built. And I also flipped the, the one outpost we've built, the uranium ore outpost for the nuclear power. That's all connected up into one system. The big oil trains are going to use this new line here, and this is probably about as far as they'll ever have to go. So I guess the ore trains, if they need to go down here, they'll just have to go around it. There is quite a lot of oil here. We probably won't ever need more than that, but if we do, we'll deal with that later. And that rail line goes up the right side of the coast and manages to hug the side of the coast and dodge these two copper patches. Now we got to deal with this train stacker. This diagonal way of stacking trains like this is very compact. It doesn't really work with this layout very well. There's a stone patch and a coal patch right in between it. I think we're going to change that so that it's vertical. So the diagonal stacker is gone, and now that we're at this point, I think we're going to make a small change. We're going to change this train from a 416. Four locomotives, 16 fluid wagons to 416. Four. We're going to go double-headed. To remove some of the infrastructure of the train having room to turn around, I put a lot of thought into this base, but this mod pack is crazy complicated, and we'll probably have to add more stuff off and to the side over here. And so not having that additional space where it's got to turn around might come in handy later. And additionally, since we have two train networks, not having that additional bulk of rail where all the trains have to turn around down here, where they're getting oil, but we've got all these other ore patches... The one fours need to access. Maybe that is going to be the right idea. So we're going to remove this signal here. Then add four trains on there. So that's the new size of the rail. And now we need to add the stacker. So what we can do, we can delete this and just make a curve. This won't be as compact as doing it diagonally, but it should still be totally fine. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six different oil patches down there. So let's just say we're going to give it space for six trains. We'll have one train for each oil patch. So we've got five extra spaces. Then we need a space where it can uh, return. We need It's going to be a two-lane highway, railway, whatever. So this can be a chain signal make that a chain block and then we'll put a normal signal there so that it can leave on the way out okay small detail here here is the basic layout the amount of lanes we need but down here we are going to need to cross the rail line that goes out to the nuclear power plant this is pretty low traffic so i'm not too concerned with the the rails crossing each other we'll signal it up so they don't crash and everything but i don't think it's going to be a traffic problem because those trains don't move very much but we have to go past this point, so I'm going to try to split the difference between those power poles so that it looks nice, because that's important, and make sure also we're not, like, running on top of any ore patches, that kind of stuff. Here's the, the line that goes down the coast. I'm in satellite mode. I keep mashing that button by mistake. So we want the finished thing to be, let's just say, like, right... Oh, there goes the train. There it goes. What do you know? I'm going to just do this as sort of a, a marker, as a guide, so we can figure out the spacing of the final thing. And then we can move this guy over to there. Ooh, that's a big fella. So I put a little bit of fuel in the train just to make sure when I put it down that it is one entire train and it's not going to come apart in the middle somewhere. Let me just drive it for a second. Yep. Okay, that seems fine. Let me exit map, get out of the train, go to the other side, put it back where it goes. And then instead of having to place each train myself, I'm going to make a blueprint, which includes the trains. And then I shall let the robots do it. That's always the best way to do it. Let the robots do it. That seems fine. We'll get out there. Then we need to make a blueprint, not a book, just a normal blueprint. I don't want to include this rail to the left, although I guess it doesn't matter that much. So I we want to make sure we get that curve, though. That seems like that'll work. Okay. Just don't move your cursor. Go down to the south to the end of the train. Zoom, zoom with my jetpack. And just to there, click Include Train. Create Blueprint. And then we just... Oh, my man, it's going to be hard to place. There we go. Like that. Boom. 
So the new stacker looks like that. I think it looks pretty nice. All the additions we've made, all the streamlining. One more thing we need to do is we need to adjust the block size. All my blueprints are set up for shorter trains. So we're going to take this train as a guinea pig, basically. We're going to drive it just past this point, which will be hard to see, actually, even at max zoom out. Maybe I'll try to look at the map. Might have to get out and get, uh, get in on the other side. Maybe that'll work. Fly up. Yeah, we weren't even close. Look at that. Man, his train's a big boy. Okay, back up even a little more. We're gonna go past this block. I want to see how much space we need for the for the block for the trains. And it's a little tricky here where there's curves. Once we get into the straight section, I'll just make another blueprint, and then we'll just adjust it from there. So we can get all the way to here. And the inside lane is a little bit compressed, so I guess right to there is probably just fine. The most important thing is that before and after any intersection that we have enough space for one full train length so that the train leaving going through the other side can entirely clear the intersection before hitting the next block. So if this block is clear, it lets the train through. It'll be able to get all the way to this point and clear the intersection. So trains trying to go through the, the crossways will have space to do so. Once we get past this point, it doesn't matter as much. But I think we'll try to figure out what the actual block size is anyway. Since we'll have a number of points, once we get to the oil where the trains will have to diverge and we'll want to make sure things are set up properly. And I've got far enough south that the train is entirely on vertical track. I'm just going to make a blueprint that I can use later as a reference for how long the block needs to be once we start setting up the, the little uh, divergent paths for the the different oil outposts, so we'll go up to both blocks like that. Wow, that is a long block. We don't need trains or train fuel. We just need the entities, and I can probably even trim off sections at the end, and we'll just, we'll do that, uh, we'll say like 4, 16, 4 block. Boom. That'll do. That'll do. And I'll put that in my, uh, my rail book, so we'll have it as a reference for later. So now that it's built, here is the Mega Base, and I guess we'll do a little bit of a breakdown to show where things are and what's going on. All the raw resources are going to be coming in via train or landing pad, and all the finished resources that we need to send into space need to end up at these rocket silos. Before they get to the rocket silos, they pass through a production area where logistics robots will be building all kinds of miscellaneous stuff. This big block on the left makes all the circuits and the modules, and it's mostly self-contained. This other big block does all the vanilla science, and it's mostly self-contained as well. There's a section here which handles oil for the base, and then a larger area for oil byproducts that need to go to space. We're also making some petroleum gas up here for all these circuits. We're going to be using a ton of vulcanite blocks. We've got multiple of our vulcanite block modules peppered around the base, supplying vulcanite blocks for all kinds of things. And we're also converting a good amount of it to rocket fuel. We're using that rocket fuel to fuel all of our rocket silos. And we're also using it for fuel for our trains. We've got a number of basic materials getting made. And then we've got a number of more complicated materials getting made. <coughs> what's that? A new space exploration update. Well, wowie zowie, let's take a look at what's new. So we've got a space elevator, right? A train right into space. That seems pretty cool. Early space science redesign. Smooth out a difficulty spike getting into space. That sounds pretty good. Capsule navigation, like a mini cargo rocket. That's pretty neat. Core mining redesign. Don't really care because I don't really like core mining. Specialist Resource Processing Redesign. All seven specialist resources have had their processing chain completely overhauled. Oh. Vulcanite Smelting Change completely changed. Oh. Module Cost Rework. Modules are different. Oh. Then we've got some minor changes, and some other minor changes, and some balance changes, and very minor changes. Okay, but the important thing is... What are we going to have to change for the base if we decide to update? Utility, production, and rocket science. Okay, so this whole section doesn't work anymore. Need to rebuild that. New space science back. That'll be in space. Core miners don't care. Module production. Yeah, modules are getting made here. So that means that all of this doesn't work either. That's pretty cool. 
Specialist resource processing, all of the modded materials, basically. So that means that the Cryonite needs to get rebuilt, all of our Vulcanite needs to get rebuilt. Beryllium doesn't work, Iridium doesn't work, and the Homonite doesn't work either. As well as the Vitamilage, all this stuff doesn't work at all. Regular resource smelting with Vulcanite. Anything that used Vulcanite plus or industrial furnace recipe. Ah, well, I was only using that pretty much everywhere. Okay, so this doesn't work, and this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this glass recipe, that doesn't work. And all this smelting around the edge of the, the circuit build, that doesn't work either now. Stone bricks, if you were using industrial furnaces for that, well, guess what? I was. And then some space mall recipes. So it turns out most of the base doesn't work anymore. And all joking aside, I had finished designing this base, which we just finished building. And then three days later, SpaceX point six was announced. And I've been on point five the whole time. And it seems like the majority of the changes to SpaceX point six have to do with the part of the game which we have just gotten past. If I was to update to point six, it would take me ages to redo all this stuff, so we're just not gonna do that. We're gonna stick with point five, we're gonna get into space, and hopefully the differences won't be too noticeable once we get into the more complicated crazy stuff up in space, flying spaceships around and all that kind of stuff. So, that's gonna do it for this episode. Next episode, we're gonna hook up the mega base. Now that it's built, we gotta build all the different resource outposts on this planet and on other planets via train or via rockets. We're gonna do all that stuff next episode. Plug everything in and start making stuff with our new, shiny, fresh, super duper space exploration mega base. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you next time. Have a good day. Goodbye.